hustle, but the nothing. OP boy. Know that the ride or die. I'm a OP boy. Know that the ride or die. I keep waving my C boy. Know that the ride or die. I keep waving my C. My name came up a lot of times, more when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of times, more when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of times, more when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of times, more when I was not around. Certain people that I know. Know that the ride or die, I keep boys by my seat. Know that the ride or die, I keep boys by my seat. Oh, boy. Baby, hustle, but the night. Oh, deep, boy. Know that the ride or die. Yeah. Oh, deep, boy. Know that the ride or die, I keep boys by my seat. Know that the ride or die. These brothers, my guys, know that they fly. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. Cold, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. CJ Ike, they ain't no longer about. They ain't no longer about. They ain't no longer about. CJ Ike. Happy Sunday morning to you. I am Uncle Mike Mike, your favorite gamer's favorite <laughs> uncle. And it is October 2nd, 2022. And yeah, welcome to the live stream. We're going to get into Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox Series X. Yes, I have upgraded to the Series X from the series S and it is amazing. <laughs> so yes, welcome here. And so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some notums here or notice to air mission, some announcements to you. And that is first, if you are watching this as a recording, not during the live stream, then Pretty sure that there is a chance then that down in the description below will be timestamps and chapters so you can skip ahead to whichever section you like, whether you like the startup, the takeoff, the cruise, the approach, whatever it might be, but there should be timestamps and chapters in that within the day or so. So make sure you check that out. Also another notum for, for you is that I am doing a giveaway. I am trying to reach 500 YouTube subscribers. And the reason why 500 is a milestone and not 1,000 is because, well, at 500, YouTube gives a channel the community tab, which is like a Facebook or Twitter directly on the channel and so i would like to do that for you my subscribers and viewers so i'm trying to give get 500 subscribers and so i'm doing a 500 subscriber giveaway uh, and you can read more also down in the description below so make sure you check out 
that too. And then also, as I will be gone this week, so there will be no live stream. So a note about no live stream here on Wednesday. My next live stream will then be Sunday, October 9th. And we might do some hunting then because the way of the hunter on the Xbox Series X is amazing. <laughs> the draw distances that we get now in that game are well beyond a thousand yards. And so you can see animals. So instead of luckily getting seeing animals at 400 yards, you can now see animals at a thousand yards or more, which has really just changed the game. So I've been enjoying that. But with that, let's go ahead and get into Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox Series X. And so here we are. We are sitting here in a Cessna 208 in Salt Lake City International. Yes, Salt Lake City, Utah, November 9 or 28, Juliet Papa. And we are doing a cargo flight, reenacting a contract cargo flight for UPS from Salt Lake City up to Burley, Idaho. And we'll talk more about the flight of November 928, Juliet Papa, as we get into the air. But we've got light snow, we've got overcast, winds are really light. It's early in the morning here. It's like 7, 7.30 in the morning or so. And so that is our route. Is It's pretty straightforward. We're instrument. Obviously, we are IFR here. And so we are going to get the 9 or 2, 8 Juliet Papa here started. And then taxi out and do our IFR flight up to Burley, Idaho, which is, which is a tragic... <laughs> which is a tragic flight. And so one of the things that I am doing now here on my YouTube channel is I have decided to start blending in the stories of Fallen Eagle flights, yes, crashes into my live streams rather than having separate recorded videos. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get into the cockpit here and let's go ahead and get the battery turned on. Let's go ahead and get the avionics booted up. So here we go, just letting everything, just all the electronics, let them warm up. And then we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and range, range out so you can kinda see the flight plan that we have already gone ahead and pre-filed and all of that so we're just going to let everything warm up <clears throat> we've got a few more system tests that are going along here and then we'll get the engine started <coughs> and since we're operating the airplane let's go ahead and turn on beacon and nav so now those beacon and nav is on telling everybody that this this airplane is about to come alive. <laughs> All right, everything is like what we see here. So let's go ahead now and let's go ahead and get rid of the yoke so we can actually see more stuff of what's going on. And parking brake is set. Let's go ahead here and I'm gonna bring the fuel lever all the way back. Go ahead, turn on the fuel. So I'm gonna come over here to my missionary bush pilot checkbox. We can kind of use this for check. So fuel is looking good there. We will go ahead and activate, activate it. The mixture control and all that here in just a minute, but confirm a brake is looking good. Controls looking good right there. We'll get trims and flap and all that, but let's go ahead and get her started up here. So let's go ahead and turn on boost pump here. Igniter's coming on. And watch that NG rise here. Just about when it gets to double digits. Go ahead and put the fuel in. 
Let this thing now just boot up. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Mm-hmm. All right. Looks like a pretty good start there. Let's go ahead and come on now and no, not landing the lights, put on some taxi lights. Go turn on the strobes. With the snow, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the heat. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the wing light. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn on the icing equipment. I am also gonna come over here. We're gonna turn on, <coughs> excuse me, turn on some. Turn on some panel lights <coughs> we can see a little better. All right. We can also go ahead and bring up ATC. I will use ATC this flight, so let's go ahead and listen to weather. I know it's, it's what we expected. It's not very good. <laughs> All right, with that, let's go ahead and propeller. Let's go full RPMs on the propeller. Let's go ahead and contact ATC, tell them that we are ready to get our clearance. All right, so let's go ahead and get our clearance. Seven oh seven on the squawk box, climb and maintain eleven thousand. All right. Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa cleared to Kilo Bravo Yankee India Airport as filed. Take off runway one six left climb and maintain eleven thousand feet. Departure on one three five decimal five squawk two seven zero seven. Cessna eight Juliet Papa read back is correct. Contact ground on one two three decimal seven seven five. All right, 775 Red Tech. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bug in 11,000 here. I'm also going to go ahead and bug in a flight level change at 95 knots to 11,000. We also go ahead and bug in 160 on the heading because we're taking off. It looks like probably on runway 16. So we'll go ahead and get that, that bugged in because again, might as well go ahead and let the airplane help us as much as possible so all right like what we've got here like what we've got let's bring up atc let's go over to 775 and let's go ahead and tell them we're ready to taxi salt lake ground cessna november niner 28 juliet papa with sierra ready to taxi ifr cessna november niner 28 juliet papa taxi to and hold short of runway one six left Taxiway Victor Golf Hotel Hotel One Tree. Contact Tower on 118 Decimal Tree when ready. Right. Taxi two and hold Make sure we don't carve up this guy. Taxiway <laughs> Victor Golf Hotel Hotel One Tree Cessna Eight Juliet. All right, brakes coming off. Make sure we can just go right over him. Yum. See you, bud. 
right. Let's go find. Let's go find our runway. All right. And according to them, we were. Victor Golf Hotel, the Hotel 13. Okay. Ooh, this is some This is some gnarly weather we got going on here. We're out of tarmac, I know that, so we'll come down here. This should this should this should give us some labels here. There it is. Golf Hotel Victor so we're on Victor. Now we need to go to golf. Now, a lot of times the uh, airports they don't do a very good job at Alright, so there's hotel. Now we need to go to Hotel 13. So we're on golf now. And now we're going to Hotel. I saw Hotel 11 or 11. Which said to go right here. So we need to keep going. All right. That's Hotel 11. You can see why we're gonna use, you know, autopilot, we got everything pre-bugged. And so we are ready to go because we're gonna need the airplane to really be our co-pilot. We are single, single pilot operations, just like the real flight of November 9 or 2, 8, Julia Papa was. It was a single pilot operation. In IMC, so instrument meteorological conditions, just like we've got here. It was early in the morning. All right, Hotel 13 is off at an angle, it says, so. I'm gonna think it's up here. Yep, looks like it. All right. Let's see if we. Let's see if we can read taxi. <laughs> Taxi signs, right? I see a sign for one six left. I see hotel one three. All right, let's go ahead and come to idle. Parking brake comes on. Let's check that we've got everything. One six zero is bugged on the heading nine five knots for a flight level change up to 11,000 feet. So everything is looking good. I like what we've got going on here. And let's go through the checklist. So flaps, uh, I don't think we're gonna need any flaps. We got plenty of runway. Trim is set for takeoff. All right, we don't have any magnetos, but systems. So we talked about all the bugs that we've done here. Everything is looking good. I like what we've got going on. We're gonna do the RNAV 20 approach once we get up there. So radios are all set. Transponder is 2707 and alternate mode. Seats and seat belts, we like what we've got going on here. And let's go ahead now and all the lighting lights and all the lights are coming off. We've got plenty of runway. We are gonna board straight ahead for almost everything that we're gonna be doing. We're gonna board straight ahead just because of the length of the runway that we've got. And we are actually going to dial in flaps because it says takeoff right there. So 150 knots is when they need to come up at least, but we're gonna be we're bugged for 95 knots. So looking good there. And let's go ahead and get takeoff cleared. So ATC is coming up. Let's go ahead and dial into the tower and takeoff clearance. Salt 
Lake Tower, Cessna November 9 or 28 Juliet Papa at runway 16 left ready for departure IFR to Kilo Bravo, Yankee, India. Cessna November 9 or 28 Juliet Papa altimeter 29 decimal for zero wind calm. Cleared for takeoff runway 16 left. Cleared for takeoff runway 16 left Cessna November 9 or 28 Juliet Papa. We're gonna go out here, we're gonna get all everything set. And then we will rock and roll. All right, I see one six left. Whew, this is this is an interesting flight here. So we're early morning. It's like uh, seven thirty local time. About an hour flight up to Burley, Idaho. Got a little cargo flight going on. So, uh, oh, one system I see that we need that I need to change is I need to change to GPS mode there on the CDI. All right, there we go. I like it. All right, straight out departure. So. I'm going to hold on to the brakes. Power's coming up. Lease the brakes. Set my prop RPM. There we go. Like it. Airspeed's alive. 35 knots. 40 knots. And rotate. Looking nice. Just gets... All right, we're accelerating. And we are definitely an IMC. Just flying by the instruments here. There's no reason to look outside. Get that nose down a little bit, accelerate to 85 knots. Flight director is on, follow the flight director. Props come, I mean, flaps coming up. And we'll pitch on up. Everything's bugged. Autopilot's coming on. And let ATC do. Switch on over. Our total IMC. All right. Oh, well, I'm gonna come over here then to if we got cleared as planned. I'm gonna come over here to our. F flight plan, and I am gonna go ahead and activate. How do I load airway? All right, well, we've got everything. We'll f I am gonna then try to load this one. Activate leg, there it is. Activate leg, activate the leg, there we go. All right, we'll go ahead and on heading bug, go ahead and start a turn. Heading mode. Got to climb out. Go ahead and get rid of the flight plan mode. There we go. Heading over to our activated leg. And there's nothing to see outside, so we are completely on instruments. We are climbing now out, heading out here to our first leg. 95 knots bugged, climbing through 8,000 feet, going to 11,000. Heading 24, 247, just heading, probably go ahead and go 250 on the heading. <laughs> I 
Heading out here to where you can see that magenta line. That is our first leg here of our flight plan, which includes the RNAV-20 approach into Burley. So again, back in April of this year, November Niner 28 Julia Papa was uh, it's on a contract cargo flight from Sandy uh, from Salt Lake City up to Burley single pilot operation in this kind of weather this time of day and all that so we are just recreating that flight that yes it ends in tragedy we'll talk about where tragedy struck here when we get to that point of the flight so everything is looking good do i have an atc call that i need to nope everything is looking good we are just proceeding on course two nine four zero uh the altimeter so looking good there 95 knots bugged we're at 95 knots we're coming up on our first waypoint in our first leg so we'll see the magenta line here on our CDI start to center. But right now we are just on heading mode, flying on over to that to that waypoint. Oh, we're busting out of the clouds. Ah, well that's cool. Maybe we will have something to see this flight. Still in a little bit of snow. We'll see what ATC gets us. I don't want to really go any higher than 12,000 feet. So, all right, GPS is centering. I'm gonna go ahead and go on nav mode. So now with the new G1000 NXI, we're in heading mode, but now the autopilot will intercept. Nope, I don't want 14,000 feet. All right. So I don't want that, I'm gonna decrease. I want to decrease by 2,000. Salt Lake departure, Cessna 8, Juliet Papa. Request 12,000 feet. Cessna 8, Juliet Papa climb and maintain 12,000 feet. 12,000, that's what I wanted. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet, Cessna 8, Juliet Papa. Go ahead and zoom on up here to 110 knots. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, let's go ahead and turn off, oh, it's not strobe, turn off all of our landing lights. Oh, beautiful up here on top. <laughs> oh, that's, well, I hope, I really hope that the pilot of November 928 Julia Papa Got to see this on this flight. This is this is amazing. Hmm. Just everything's looking good. Level at twelve thousand feet. We're on GPS mode. <sighs> Landing lights are off. It is cold outside. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and now that we've gone through the weather, let's go ahead and ignition to normal. We had a lot of stuff coming through, so I wanted to go ahead and make sure that that was all on. We'll probably turn all that back on as we go through the the weather on approach. Just wanted to help the help the little turbine stay running. Let's check all our backup instruments. Everything is looking good. Set two nine four zero. Go ahead and check in engine. Everything is looking good here. I like what we've got up here. So, yeah, we are now in cruise. <coughs> Just look at that. That is. 
Again, one thing you gotta remember if you're watching here, if you're interested in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is now on the Xbox Series X. We are flying a Cesta Caravan, November 9 or 2, 8, Juliet Papa out of Salt Lake City, up to Burley, Idaho. Man, this is amazing. Mm. Let's see, do I want to take a, yeah, I'll take a screenshot like. Mm. Hold my little button down, take a screenshot, there we go. Look at November 928, Juliet Papa. What a beautiful Cessna Caravan 208. All right, let's jump in the cockpit. Let's just make sure. All right. We're just about to come up to a waypoint change. There it goes. Just changed over. Just go ahead and monitor systems. There goes Otto, our little German co-pilot, is turning us now onto a new heading here after we passed Anity Waypoint. Short flight today. Should be right around about an hour in the air look at this look at this up on top this is amazing oh, let's come down here we can also turn off since we're up here in the sun go ahead and turn off the wing light for the icing <laughs> amazing <laughs> All right, everything's looking good. 146 knots indicated. Engines look good. 12,000 feet. We are a VFR up here on top. <laughs> hmm. And we can come over here and range this out. So we are basically. Kind of crossing the Great Salt Lake, going up to Krebs is our next waypoint in looks like about 12 minutes. We are 172 knots over the ground. Now, if you did see, if you noticed when we booted up the avionics, that all of this was, a lot of this was like red and yellow. The reason being is because I have relative uh, terrain on. So what it's going to show us is it's going to show us in red. It's going to show us basically from our height, 50 feet or 500 feet below us. And then anything red is 500 feet to 1,000 feet below us. And then anything in green terrain is 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet below us. And then black is there's no there's no terrain, right, really kind of a, of a concern or anything like that. So as we shoot the approach, you'll see on here that terrain will, will pop up in places. Because especially if it's red, because that means then it's uh, there's a concern there for that. So, but yeah, now it's just a flight, so we can kind of talk about the actual flight of uh, November nine or two eight Juliet Papa. But again, it was a flight, again a cargo flight, a little contract cargo flight for UPS, flown by a uh, you know a small regional company. Um, and so, from what I understand is that we had done this flight the day before. The weather was bad, and we couldn't get into Burley, Idaho. And, uh, and so, we tried the next day. So, it's UPS. So, it's packages and all that kind of stuff. Which is, which is really, you know, which is kind of uh, common. That happens, you know, there's a lot of these small regional carriers that have contracts with... The you know the Amazons and the UPS and you know maybe even the you know the United States Postal Service and all these other you know kind of package carriers. 
And so this pilot, she was she was flying from Salt Lake City up to Burley, trying to get into Burley to deliver these packages because you know now they're now they're a day late. Isn't good. And let's see. Let's go ahead and play with the the drone camera. Wow. Like I said, I uh, because I know the the tragedy that struck this flight. <laughs> it would be it would be amazing <laughs> to know that she saw a view like this on this flight because this is amazing. Check some. Let's go ahead and see drone. <laughs> we got this view. I think we'll leave it. Well, I think we'll set that as our view for for approach. We just got a few more minutes here before we get to next waypoint. Then we make a slight left turn and head toward Burley, Idaho. Which, of course, as you can probably guess, is right on the border between Utah and Idaho. But we know we've got this snow below us, this overcast below us. So we we have filed to shoot the non-precision RNAV 20. It actually is an LNAV, so it, or an R or a VNAV. So it does give us. It's not precision, but it does. The the avionics here will pick up a glide path. It's not a glide slope. It's a glide path. So it gives us basically roughly what the glide path should be on our approach into runway 20 at Burley. So this is the same approach that November 9028 Julia Papa flew on this on this tragic flight. So and as you know on my YouTube channel I like to when it comes to flight sim, I like to recreate in real life flights, whether they are just fun flights that pilot tubers do and they post on YouTube, or even if it's tragic flights like this. But yeah, everything is, everything is looking good. Fuel quantity looks good, oil looks good, engine looks good. Yep, 12,000 feet. Now, if you're interested, like I said, in Microsoft Flight Sim on the Xbox. We got an ATC handoff here as we head north. <clears throat> One three five decimal seven seven five for Cessna eight Juliet Papa. Salt Lake Center, Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa twelve thousand feet. Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa Salt Lake Center altimeter two nine decimal four zero continue as planned. <laughs> Continue as planned. Let's go ahead and see if we need a. Nope, I don't. Usually when they do that, there's no read back that you need to do or anything like that. So we'll just continue as we're going. But again, if you're interested in Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you're into aviation, Google Earth, exploring the Earth, anything like that, this is on the Xbox Series X. And yeah, it is. It is absolutely amazing. <laughs> But you can pick it up on, on Game Pass. We just went through a update here on an update on Microsoft Flight Simulator and they now the G1000 NXI here, this avionics suite, which has a lot more functionality, which I haven't learned completely yet. but it gives us a lot more information on the avionics. 
So, like you can, if we look over here, uh, right here, that right there, that is an airliner. That's another plane right here. So literally see if we can see him. He's 8,000 feet, looks like above us, right off our left wing. See if we can see him up there somewhere. No, I do not see him climbing. But now we've got that functionality. We've got the terrain that we already talked about. Like here's another plane descending. So they're descending. Or 5,000, I think that means 5,300 feet above us. Again, I'm not completely <laughs> up to date on everything. So as you can see, I've got all the detail on. So this is all the information is showing us, you know, in case we had an emergency, where other airports are at, other other you know traffic so the airways so this is showing us everything that we can that's available to us so all right we're just about three minutes out here from our next waypoint we'll we're auto our little german co-pilot here the autopilot should make us do a turn to the left just a slight turn to the left but this is just beautiful up here on top of this weather It should let's see if I all right there we go you get see all those name tags back there I've turned on with a hot key those are all most of those are all other humans playing Microsoft Flight Simulator back there pretty much they're probably all back there at Salt Lake City uh, it's a beautiful place to fly because there's with the mountains and the lake and and it just it's just it's amazing <laughs> so but now they've given us a hot key so you can basically toggle those on and off which is great because I have to say I I like that rather than having to go into options and turn it on or off you can just hit it with a with a hotkey but just monitoring systems so I would think like I said on that fateful day here back in April November 9 or 2 8 Juliet Papa had a beautiful flight like this. Just monitoring systems, trying to get into Burley. It was my understanding that they had to divert to Twin Falls, Idaho, because they couldn't get into Burley, a little west of Burley the day before. So here we are now, just beautiful flight, trying to get back into Burley. One of the things that I will deviate from the actual flight of the recreation of the flight of November 9 or 2, 8, Julia Papa is when she did her first approach, she declared a missed approach. Get another handoff. Go ahead and acknowledge that. Go ahead and switch, switch frequencies and it's dial. There we go. Lake Center, Cessna November 9er, 28 Juliet Papa, 12,000 feet. Cessna November 9er, 28 Juliet Papa, Salt Lake Center altimeter, 29er decimal, 40, continue to cribs as planned. All right, let's just continue as planned. But on that fateful day, she actually shot a missed approach. And I am not going to do the missed approach. And the reason I'm not going to do the missed approach is because I haven't really figured out the best way to tell our avionics that we're actually doing the missed approach. So that way the avionics know that we're doing it and we want to go do the approach again. I've, I've been trying to figure it out, but I, I can't, I can't get it to like to activate basically I tell it I want to do a missed approach 
and then nothing happens. So I don't know if it's a bug. So for that reason, that when we do this here is we are only going to do a single approach. We are not going to be doing a missed approach as um, she did on her flight to into Burley. So. But just a beautiful flight up here. Again, if you are interested, keep in mind that, yes, I have upgraded my my console. Uh, you can see right over there, there is the old Xbox Series S on the desk behind me. And my old TV is back there. And I have finally, after what, a couple of years, upgraded to an Xbox Series X and also I got a 28 inch 4K gaming monitor. So unfortunately that doesn't come through because onto this live stream because my capture card is still just high def at 1080p. But we'll maybe in the future get around to, to fixing that. But still, it's just absolutely amazing to think that what you're seeing here is on a gaming console. This is not hardcore PC or anything like that. This is off the shelf gaming console. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and see what we've got here. We got another, f we got four minutes till we get to Blinda. Blida, Blida, maybe it's Blida there, Waypoint, as we are heading up toward Burley, Idaho. But everything is looking good. Airplane is performing well. Everything is already filed. So avionics know what we are going to do. Shoot that RNAV 20 into Burley with the, uh, oh, I think it's the malt transition. So it's going to, it's almost looks like the RNAV 20 into Burley looks like a left hand traffic pattern. That's really what it looks like. So. Look at how we're just skirting the clouds up here. <laughs> this is amazing. Wait, wait, we've got a view. Got the cargo pod view. at that wow like I said if she got to see this view oh look at that look at this right on the top it gives me goosebumps right on the top of the clouds That's, that's epic. No, no, it's amazing. <laughs> hmm, kind of brings tears to my eyes. Like I said, I I know what happens, and to see this view, just tragedy. Hmm. This is, I mean, I know this is game, this is just graphics, but this is real close to looking like a photo here. Right, let's go in the airplane, just make sure everything is performing as expected. Engines look good. Auto's got us being real nice. We got a minute and a half before we get to Blida. And then we're going on to Sheer Waypoint. And what I'm looking at here, if, in case you're interested, is right there you can see blida the magenta is our current path and we're going to go to sheer and then continue on up to burley idaho mm. Mm. get my coffee here well, another reason why i enjoy live stream in Microsoft Flight Simulator and also Way of the Hunter, but 
Microsoft Flight Sim is what we'll talk about here right now is because, well, it, it gives me time to chat and to interact with my subscribers and viewers and to let me look over and see what's going on in chat and monitor the health of the live stream and so on. Because that's what happens with aviation. There is a lot of, uh, you know, time to, to look around and to enjoy the scenery or this beautiful weather up on top here in this beautiful morning coming out of Salt Lake City once we get on top because down below in these clouds it's not that pretty <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna make uh, November 9 or 2 a Julia Papa and us work so but yeah so I mean with live streaming you can you can do this that's that's why I you know I thought for a while doing like a podcast about gaming or something or about flight flying and, and that type of stuff but again I thought why I can talk about podcast stuff or I can talk about whatever we want to chat about while we're flying while we're up here at cruise so you can do the same thing with hunting whether we're stalking or sitting in a deer blind in way of the hunter we can then talk uh, and and I think that's what perhaps uh, some people they like to see the actual flying or hunting or all that kind of stuff the exciting moments but also they want a place perhaps to come and just chat. I will eventually here in the future also have the hangar and the lodge voice chat set up through Discord. So I will be monitoring those here in the future because now Xbox has voice channels linked to Discord. So I do have now my Discord listed in the description and so I will be monitoring those so that way then people can come in and they can instead of using party chat and Xbox I can use discord so that way basically anybody can then come in and, and chat whether they want to text or type the chat or if they want to actually talk so I'll be working on that here soon it's not this flight right now but perhaps the the next and so on I'll be working on that and I'll be then putting that also into the description for the live stream so that's one thing that I'm going to be working on of course that takes will probably take some moderation to do but discord allows us to do that so that way that I could have actually people just coming in and, and talking and I'm not sure if it will be picked up on the live stream or not we'll need to do a test on that so all right, we're just sitting up here. Like I said, Otto's got us. Everything is just looking beautiful up here at 12,000 feet. The reason why 12,000 feet, I didn't want to go to 14,000 feet is because I, I don't know if this airplane, I would imagine so somewhere. I am looking to see if it's modeled anywhere. So there is the oxygen but I don't see where it's modeled anywhere that we've actually got oxygen. <laughs> There's where it's modeled. Like a, you know, oxygen on or off. But basically at 12,500 feet, the FAA then really kind of says you need supplemental oxygen um, just cause it's, it's high. <laughs> not a lot of oxygen human, human body needs some oxygen <laughs> so I really didn't want to worry about modeling that or anything so alright so we are four four and a half minutes from sheer now up to Nolte is then the next waypoint we are 172 knots over the ground so it's actually probably going to be less than an hour flight up here to Burley, but of course, then we've got to shoot the RNAV 20 approach into runway 20, the RNAV 20 approach, which when you see it here on the multifunctional display, it, it looks like a left-hand traffic pattern. It's literally, we intersect it, we use malt, intersect our transition, and then it's it literally looks like a big left-hand traffic pattern. So fairly easy approach but it's not going to be that easy because if it's anything like the weather we had back in salt lake city 
this is going to be nasty weather. Luckily, the winds were very light, but we did have snow, very low clouds. So that is going to make the that's going to make the approach there itself challenging. Luckily, November nine or two eight, Julia Papa is set up to fly in that kind of weather. So we've got. With the D1000 NXI full avionics suite, we can actually have Otto, our German co-pilot, <laughs> the autopilot, they can fly us down all the way to decision height. Oh, based also on that, while we're just up here fly along, we can bring up that and let's go ahead and come down to, oh. And a handoff here, just as I was about to do a little work. One one eight decimal zero five for Cessna eight Juliet Papa. Dial it up. All right, let's contact him. Salt Lake Center, Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa twelve thousand feet. Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa Salt Lake Center altimeter two nine or decimal four zero. Continue to share as planned. All right. So we're gonna use the radar altimeter, and I know that into Burley, because I've been studying the approach, uh, it has it has a 500 foot. Um, decision height. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I just, did I just kick off auto? That's the only problem. You got so much things with the controls that if I don't hold down the right, the correct button. So that should be, I'll be dialed in. Let's just go ahead and make sure to see if it did. Yep, it stayed there. Okay. So now we've got our decision height. So we can have Otto, our a German co pilot, the autopilot, flies down to decision height, which will be 500 feet above the ground using the radar altimeter. And once we are down lower, what you'll see is you'll actually see the decision height will be over here on our altitude bar. You'll also see a thing pop up that says RA and it'll give a number. That's the actual radar altimeter. And then the decision height should also be shown here as 500 now feet above the ground. So that is what we have now go ahead and dialed in there for helping us. Again, we'll have, we're gonna use as much information as we can because things are gonna get busy here real quick. We can actually see the approach starting to show up, the transition, so there is MALT. You can see that we make then almost a nine degree turn to the right. We go up to MUTO, then a left-hand turn, and then on to basically the approach path into Burley. That's Burley just showing up on the map right there. So. And don't forget, we've got our missionary bush pilot checklist box. This is what you hear me clicking and stuff. As you know, I have used this and I have not used this in some of my flights, but this is actually used by missionary bush pilot in his actual flying. So if you go check out missionary bush pilot, the pilot tuber on YouTube, a uh, link for this box is an affiliate link in the description below. But if you find his YouTube channel, Missionary Bush Pilot, you'll actually see in his Kodiak, which is really a souped up version. It's not, it's a completely different airplane, but it looks like a Cessna 208 with just much better bush performance, stole performance. You can actually see this on his dash, on his cockpit, where he is using this as a checklist. His is a little bit different than mine. I've got one that's a little bit more generic since I fly more piston than I do turbine, but you can actually see it. So, and it's a tool there. You can, s <coughs> you can see that I put a yellow or my, my uncle Mike, Mike orange, because it sits on here and that way it's visible to me. And I look down, I'm like, what's this orange thing? Oh, it's a checklist. Because if you followed me on, on at least one of my flights, you know that the box was here and I didn't even use it. And I made almost a, it could have been a bad mistake. We've, as we descended down, I had 
the mixture leaned out on this piston airplane i had the the engine leaned out this piston engine and came almost down to sea level so it could have leaned out and and the engine could have quit because i didn't use the checklist which has right here as you are coming down right there is a whole the second switch for landing is mixture <laughs> and i didn't even use it but luckily i did not lean and starve the engine of fuel so all right looks like the cloud layer is coming up just a little bit we're just dancing here right on the top of the clouds we've got just over seven minutes here before we get to nolte and then once we get to nolte then things probably are going to start happening because the next will be the transition for the approach at malt so turn on some icing systems in case we just get some icing here because it is it is there is snow and mist and all of this which we'll see if that if that hurts us or not oh. all right we're gonna go back into the thick of it all right, so we're going to go ahead and bug 8,200 feet. I am bugging that. 8,200 feet. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it 1,000 feet per minute. And we're just going to go ahead and come back on the... Come back on the engine here. And there we go. All right, since we are going to go get down into the thick of this, I am going to go ahead and turn on all the lights. And here we go. At some point, there's going to be no reason to look outside because it's from Because what the forecast was this is overcast so once we get down to 10,000 feet 9,000 feet it's gonna be just it probably solid overcast so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a view something like this so we can actually just watch all the instruments we can still see out in case it does give us a little clearing Everything is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, well, once we get on to, once we get to malt, we'll start doing landing checklist. We'll get set up early. Coming up on 10,100 feet, going down to 8,200. You can start to see now that is not weather that's showing up here. That's, that's showing up here. That's not weather. That's terrain. Remember our terrain? So we've got a mountain over here. Behind us, we've got a mountain out here. Got a mountain right off the nose. Which... Points... Can't see. So that's why all that red, yellow, and green is growing there on the multifunctional display, because that is terrain. Red is either at our height or, be or below us only by 500 feet. We can go ahead and also, we'll go ahead and zoom, there we go. We're a thousand away from 8,200, so. So we've got a mountain that is 
between a thousand to two thousand feet below us, right off the nose. We're about to level off at eight thousand two hundred. Oh yeah, we can see we can see some of the ground there. There we go. Ooh, this flight path is taking us right by, <laughs> right by that mountain. We're gonna basically we're gonna be skirting a mountain here, coming up here in just about three minutes or so. So we're going back into the thick of it bye bye so we'll go ahead and get back in here I'm gonna go ahead and now come back on the power bring our torque back up to about 2,000 there we go Can't see nothing, but we know there's we know there's mountains right over there. <laughs> All right, after we get past uh, after we get past this multi multi waypoint here. Then the next one is malt. And we know we've got terrain all around us. We're going right, kind of right in between those there. We know we have terrain that we could crash into to our left. So we're going to need to monitor and just, just make sure that auto doesn't deviate us to the left. Because that would not that would not end well. Oh. Alright, that's us. So they've cleared us direct to malt, which we've already got bugged in. Let's just go ahead and acknowledge. Falls approach. Dial it on over. Give him a buzz. Twin Falls approach Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa eight thousand two hundred feet. Cessna November Niner two eight Juliet Papa Twin Falls approach altimeter two Niner decimal for zero. Continue to MALTT as planned. All right, so now you can actually start to see the approach. You can also see the missed approach. That's one nice thing about the G1000 NXI avionics suite that we upgraded to here in Microsoft Flight Simulator on the latest uh, update. But again, what I haven't figured out how to do is to actually activate it. I've gone into the menu and say activate missed approach, but nothing doesn't seem to actually like like load up like to give me the GPS so I can just hit nav mode and then the plane will fly the missed approach. So we are, as I've said, we are going to reenact this by and recreate her flight of November 928 Juliet Papa is that we are going to do a single approach and then we'll talk about the tragedy that happened for November 928 Juliet Papa on the fateful day back here in April so but now you can see the the approach the RNAV 20 it looks like a, just left hand traffic got a very defined downwind and then base and then final uh, to keep us away of you know of terrain so oh look at that it, wow. 
It cleared up on us. We still got snow. We still got snow all around. We'll see how our approach into Burley is. But there is the terrain that it is worried about. That terrain out there, that, that will kill us. So the airport is actually just kind of right out there in the snow somewhere. So I have a feeling we're going to get back into weather as we go to shoot the approach here. Just checking to make sure everything is good. Everything is already programmed in to the avionics. Now that we are even closer, let's go ahead and zoom those in like that. Yeah, but now we've got a nice, a nice view of the area, but we can definitely see that we have got snow still falling all over the place and I cannot see the airport so I think it is in snow all right we're just a couple two minutes or a minute 45 seconds out from malt which is our transition on to the RNAV. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Sky Vector. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the RNAV approach. And as we have just a little bit of time here, I'll go ahead and show you. So here is the RNAV approach. We're down, we are down here. Coming in, here is Malt. We're gonna make this left turn, come up and come up and come around. So that is what we are gonna do. I've already programmed in the it looks like it looks like it's oh it's four hundred and eight is the decision height, so we'll fix that here in the avionics. So there we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and fix that here. So come down here into our references. Radar altimeter, 408, we'll put in 410. There we go. And we just got to malt, so we're making the turn now. Here we go. I think we're gonna get into the soup again because right over there is the airport and it looks like it is in snow falling snow and we've got snow right in front of us Yep. All right. Well, let's get our let's get our A game on. All right. Since we're basically like out of kind of a downwind, let's go ahead and start going through our checklist again. Missionary bush pilot checklist. Real world pilot simmer doesn't matter. Checklist box for flying. Get yours today. Huh? huh? Go down into the description below. Affiliate link. All right. Selectors. Uh, brakes are off. Fuel is on. Quality looks good even for the return flight, so we're looking good there. Uh, fuel, fuel looks good. Seats and harnesses look good. All right. Landing lights are already on. We've been on for a while. Everything is looking good. Can we actually, you can't actually turn on the inertial separator. Does it give us a warning that it's on? Not that I see, but I think we're going to get back into snow here. So I am going to go ahead and turn on the igniters. Uh, 
All right, everything is looking good there. Radios and instruments, we are all dialed in, looking good there. Uh, <clears throat> board procedure, uh, we're going for the airport here because we're gonna be about to be an IMC, but remember that it looks like out in this direction where we're at, we would be able to see. So it seems like to me right now that we are heading 025, so we need to come basically south. When you go to best glide speed and then head south, we might be able to get out of the weather to be able to see for an abort. All right. Uh, v ref is 95 knots. That is dialed in already. And we got flaps and landing clearance here once we get there. So, so there's two, two more things left on the box for the checklist, and we are ready to land. Again, we are. We are back into the the soup. All right, we're about to come up here to our the Muto fix, make a left turn, uh, basically is our base. Just gonna go more here, check, we're at Muto. We're gonna get descended down here soon, should be 7,000 feet or so. Maybe even 6,000 feet, we shall, we shall see. Terrain, terrain, we don't, doesn't look like we're worried about terrain. At least it's not showing me any terrain. That is a concern right now. All right. There's the 7,000 feet call out. Descend and maintain 7,000 feet, Cessna 8 Juliet Papa. Bug 7,000 feet. Thousand feet per minute. Can we come back on the power? I'm gonna go ahead and come full, <coughs> full RPMs. Gonna come back on the power. We're gonna go ahead and start getting set up here for. for landing. We're landing. Gonna go. All right, slowing down here in the descent. Seven thousand feet. That is what's published. We're below one hundred and fifty knots. First notch of flaps can come in. That is placard. One hundred and fifty knots indicated. It's going to help slow us down. Coming up at 7,000 feet. All right. Set in power. Let's acknowledge that. 6,000 feet is coming in bugged. 6,000 is bugged. 1,000 feet per minute. Oop, not 1,500. 1,000 feet per minute. off the power all right make it a turn on the final Here comes, you can see the ground now, the green shading <laughs> for ground. 
Radar altimeter is alive. I'm going to go approach mode. So you can see now it stays on GPS, but now we got glide path here. Bugged. All right, speed. Coming down, VY is, our reference is 95. All right, 95 knots, 6,000 feet. Speed looks good. All right, so we know we're gonna go full flaps once we're airport's made and landing clearance is the last thing. This is an uncontrolled airport, so we'll get a handoff here from ATC. <laughs> Everything is looking good in the neighborhood. 6,000 feet at Hiko is the initial approach is our final approach fix it looks like so we are just about at hico so we should start to see the diamond moving yep here comes the glide path right here that you can see that i think it's moving maybe not now we've got a little bit longer to go before it starts to moving but we'll get we'll get a glide path diamond here that will come down and then auto should intercept that when the diamond diamond moves down and the diamond should move down when we get to Hiko which we're coming up on Hiko right now all right all right so we're gonna go ahead and turn to traffic now and we're just gonna go ahead and tell them that we are on final Speed looks good. One notch of flaps is already in. We're just come. We're just waiting to come up on Hiko here in about 30 seconds. That is our final approach fix. The diamond is alive. You can see the diamond moving down right here. Again, this is not a precision approach. This is an RNAV. It does give us a a designated, if you want to call it, flight path or glide path, not a glide slope. A glide path it's 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 like designed in right electronically so we are now on the glide path auto has intercepted the glide path I'm gonna come off the power here We're a little fast All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and monitor auto still a little fast come back off the power We've got landing clearance. It's uncontrolled, so checklist is done. Radar altimeter, we're at 1,550 feet. Remember, we got a radar altimeter of 410 is our minimum. We need to, at that point, we should be seeing the runway. So we've got 1,000 feet to go. And right now, we can't see nothing. We're on V ref. That was looking good on glide path. Start to see the yellow coming in just because terrain is. We're only a thousand feet above the ground. I can start to see the ground a little bit. But we are in we are in snow here. Blowing snow. IMC. <coughs> Alright, start to see the ground. Go ahead and get an outside picture. This is what it looks like if you could if you had a drone, you could look outside. This is what it would look like. There's the airport. So airport is in sight at 600 feet. And, but the airport is, well, this is real tough here. So we're coming up here on decision height. We're getting a break in the storms. Still got snow. We're coming up on decision height. 
it's actually kind of cleared up a little bit so we got decision height right here so there we go we just went through decision height airport is in sight and so here we come right here and right here I am gonna go ahead and active pause the sim because it was at this point in the actual flight of November 928 Julia Papa and it's not modeled but right below us in the snow here you can actually see it in the aerial photographs and stuff but right below us here is a potato processing plant with a bunch of exhaust stacks and for some reason November 928 Julia Papa struck one of those exhaust stacks at this point in the approach path and November 928 Julia Papa immediately crashed onto the roof of the potato processing plant killing the lone pilot and once I edit the video right up here I'll put a card and a link to a video if you would like to get more information about the tragic flight of November 928 Julia Papa but in honor of the pilot let's go ahead and go back in the airplane and in honor of her let's go ahead and finish our approach so active pause coming off and autopilot's coming off full flaps airport is made It's a it's a short it's a short airport flight idle landing a little long here we are definitely gonna need break and we're down all right yeah very you can see look at that we're already at the end here brakes coming in hopefully you don't slide here on the ice brakes coming off And let's go ahead and yeah so that's there's multiple <laughs> factors you could almost say flaps coming up that contributed to this I mean short runway weather <sighs> what's up action <Action> plaza <laughs> But yeah, again, you can go learn about the actual e tragic flight of November 928 Julia Papa that took the life of this solo pilot. Just, uh, I don't know what this ground person's doing. But I'm going to go over here. I am I'm good here just recreated the short flight of November 9 or 2 8 Juliet Papa gonna go ahead and park it right here so we can unload the packages yeah yeah I see you over there I'm trying to get there All right, we're just gonna go ahead and parking brakes coming on. Let's make sure everything is looking good in the neighborhood. I do, so let's go ahead and inertial separator can go back in. Parking brakes are set. We can go ahead and igniters can come back to normal. Fuel boost, since we're not in the weather, can come off. All of the lighting lights and everything can come off. We'll go ahead and keep the beacon on for now since we're still officially operating the aircraft. And go ahead and bring the prop lever back to minimum. And go ahead, oh, not the flap lever. Shut her down. 
Looking good, looking good there. But yeah, it's just a tragic story of November 928 Julia Papa. All right. Everything is off there, so Beacon now can come off. All of the anti-ice stuff can come off, and then we're flying in the snow. And Avionis can go ahead and come off. Engine starter is off. It's off, and battery can come off. So there we go. Shut down. Nice, nice flight. This is an honor flight here for November 9028 Julia Papa. As I said, there will be a card put into this video once I edit it uh, in a couple days or so. Uh, but I will put a description in, uh, or I'll link in the description also to another video that you can watch that really talks about the crash of November 9028 Julia Papa going into Burley, Idaho, which we just did. So again, a, a tragic flight. I am also going to start, I think, combining my live streams with also the flights that I recreate, whether they be fun flights of pilot tubers in real life and posting their flights or whether it be tragic flights like this that end in crash just so we can remember them, maybe learn from them, kind of get a view from them of to what they experienced and what they were going through and all of this. This flight seems to have a multiple, in the Swiss cheese model, a multiple of things that were pressure points and stuff like that that got to this pilot into you know uh, into a mindset perhaps uh, but there was a lot of things going on here as i mentioned on the flight november 9 or 2 8 julia papa diverted to twin falls idaho the day before uh, she actually shot the approach on this fateful day i shot the approach once and I had to go missed approach because she couldn't see the runway did a missed approach, came back in, and that's actually when she struck the exhaust stack of the potato processing plant and crashed and died. Um, but, you know, maybe packages were already late, weather, who knows what the stress was, who knows what the human factors were uh, on that fateful, fateful day here. So, but that's the flight of November 928 Julia Papa. So I'm going to go ahead and come on over here into chat, catch up on chat with Action Plaza here in the in the chat. So, uh, yeah, I will let you know, uh, Action Plaza, that, yep, this is now on, uh, I am now on the Xbox Series X. So, yes, this is on the Xbox I have upgraded now to the Xbox Series X from the S. So before, I was flying on the S Series. I am totally thrilled because it's an improvement of, yes, the graphics here on Microsoft Flight Sim, but especially the graphics on Way of the Hunter because now on that I can see animals so much further, excuse me, so much further out. So, uh... Yeah, actually, maybe I just need to plan a flight over Guyana and see if there's any landmarks and that type of thing. But yeah, we could uh, do, just do a fun flight and so on. As the notums, the notice to air missions, the, the notes that I mentioned in the beginning of the flight here, just go ahead and uh, remind everybody that I do put timestamps and chapters. So if you come back to the video here, perhaps in, uh, in a couple days or so, well, I'm going to be gone, so it's going to be maybe over a week but uh, i do put timestamps in here so for those of you who are watching the video after the live stream you can go back and you can watch and you can fast forward basically through the chapters and timestamps to really specific events that happen like takeoff landing start approach final landing whatever it might be <laughs> that you can go ahead and just uh, fast forward and skip to those using the chapters also, I have a strategy that uh, I want to get to 500 subscribers uh, here on my YouTube channel to get the community tab on my channel so that way I can write notes and basically it's like a Facebook or Twitter right on the YouTube channel. And so I'm doing a $50 Xbox 
gift code giveaway for that. You can go down in the description right now and look at the rules for that. And again, the next live stream that I will be doing will be Sunday, a week from the day, Sunday, October 9th. And the reason being is because I'm going to be gone in the real world here next week or this coming week. So, but yeah, that is this live stream for today. And it looks like we've got perhaps a little request here uh, to maybe do a live stream over Guyana. Got to do some research with that, but... Thank you for joining, and uh, yep, I live stream Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I will update the, what do you want to say, the live stream with the chapters and all of that here. Uh, I can do that today, but I can't add the cards or anything like that actually in the video. I can't edit in the video uh, until YouTube finishes processing it. But I also live stream Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States, and I live stream two games, which is Microsoft Flight Simulator, where I mostly recreate create flights that you can watch in the real world on YouTube or information about them, like this flight, which tragically ended in a crash, and I also live stream and play Way of the Hunter, which is a hunting simulator here on the Xbox Series X. So that is amazing. <laughs> so with that, all the notams are complete and everything, and we are down here in the ground and ready to go ahead and shut down. So everybody have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you live streaming here on October 9th in a week. Bye, everybody.